So at this point so far, the project uh, has the ability to log in and log out. Eventually, when you log in, uh, then it's the whole world of what's in the app. Um, we'll spend some time today to start to create then what else this app is going to be now that we can get into the app. Um, we've got a page one, page two, navigation bar. We've got some empty placeholder stuff there that we'll do later. Uh, we're going to create these couple of other screens that we need for this app to, to work. Um, and then uh, after that's done, we'll start to talk about, well, customizing colors. I'm getting bored with it being black and white and gray. Uh, even if we choose data theme B, well, it's, it's a dark theme. It's interesting, but uh, that's uh, boring after a while. I want to uh, learn how to choose my own colors for the header and uh, drop shadow colors and all that great stuff. We'll do that. And then I also want to customize fonts and stuff. So we'll cover, <coughs> we'll cover that too, customization visually of the project, because this jQuery mobile template, it looks fine. It works fine, but it's very basic, and it looks the same for everyone. I want to know how do I customize it a bit more for myself. Before that, I want to create the screens about what page one and page two is. Back on uh, earlier in the course, two weeks ago or something, we drew a simple wireframe where we focused on the part that says, well, you've got this login screen, and then there's a branch that goes on to sign up, and a branch that goes on to log in. We're finally done with that, that drawing that we did a while ago. Well, we are, we are now inside the app, and we could draw another quick wireframe for this, but not really necessary because we're going to have a main screen, uh, kind of welcome screen, whatever, in the app, and then we're going to have a screen where we save the data of the comic and a screen where we retrieve the data of the comics. So uh, we need to capture all of this information and then we need to store it and retrieve it in a database. So we need to create those screens. These buttons will here will be Save Comics, View Comics. So let's go to our PG Home and name those properly. Save Comic, View Comic. Let's see. Back to the HTML. PG Home. We've got line 80 and 81 or so. This is page 1, page 2. Save Comic, View Comics. Remember, those are plain old bullet points, part of an unordered list, so bullet points, but in a nav uh, element that has a data role of nav bar, so it looks like a horizontal nav bar. We can put icons and all of that, um, set transitions and everything. Uh, that'll be on the to-do list. At the very least, um, these are going to go somewhere, PG Save Comic. PG View Comics. And be careful here about the plurality. PG View Comics. One is plural, one is singular. Make them both singular, both plural, whatever is easiest to remember. So these are going to go to two different screens, a Save Comics screen and a View Comics screen, which don't exist. So we've got our template section that we can copy and paste to create each of these. Uh, let's do view comics first. That will actually be a little bit easier than save comics. We're going to save a bunch of data of a comic or any sort of inventory item with a lot of input fields. Viewing and displaying those is relatively easier. So we'll do the view comics section. If you've got your your template still intact somewhere at the end of your code. You can copy that. Actually, this PG Home is it's the same thing. That one already has the nav bar filled in. Maybe it's it, maybe it'll be better to fill this to use this one. Um, start home. Yeah, I'll do that. I'm gonna copy that PG Home. To repurpose it, I'll put it after options.
So I've copied PG Home, and that is going to be Start View Comics. End View Comics. ID PG View Comics. Up on the H1, um, call it View Comics. I don't need this. Um, well, we could have that the Options button is visible on every screen, or we could have it that it's visible only on one screen. If we want it visible on every screen, we leave that line there, PG, href pg options, and it's done. So we'll leave it. We've got save comics, view comics, nav bar. Well, actually, up on the H1, uh, let's leave that CVDB, and then in our H2, that's where we'll say uh, view comics. I don't want a footer in this case as I'm displaying this list of content that footer might you know take up some space that I need for the actual main interface the article this is just for aesthetics this is something that you can decide to use or not I personally uh, don't want a footer in this screen I want to use I want that article to take up as much space as visible. Um, so this will be our view comics screen. You can do a quick test of it. Should not be anything special or surprising. I'm in the app, save comic, view comic. I'll go to view comics. I view comics. I might maybe set that transition set on fade. If I go back to this home. Now we've got these two buttons which go to save comic, view comic. If I'm in view comic, my navigation is only allowing me to view comic, save comic. What I could do is change these buttons to dynamically change to either view comic, save comic, or home. Or I could have a home button, a save comic, and a view comic. So different ways to set up this navigation based on whatever aesthetic or idea might be useful. What I'm getting at is, again, we're not going to rely on a browser navigation button to go back home. We should have an in-app navigation. So if I'm inside of the uh, view comics, I want a new navigation button. You can copy the existing one and paste it, which will be home, and that'll be PG Home. So that'll automatically create a new button, give me the requisite amount of uh, space, uh, uh, equally equidistant spacing between each of those items. It's jQuery Mobile in action. And now in the app itself, I have navigation. If I'm in the View Comics screen, I can easily then move over to uh, the other screens. have to look this up. don't have it in my notes, but there is also a way. You often see this in an app. Uh, you often see this in an app, don't you, where you're going from screen to screen, and okay, I have the possibility, I'm in the home screen, I have the possibility to go to save or view. You go to view, and you often see that when you're in a particular section, that particular button is no longer active. I have to look up the code for that. But there is a way to make that button no longer active, to keep it highlighted. 
you often see that in an app. No need to click on that again, you're already in View Comics. So we'll add that a little later. But now I've got a button to go back home if I want to, and from here I'm in Home and I can View Comics. I want to be able to go to Save Comics or Home, or from Home, go to Save Comics. So I need a Save Comics screen. Save Comics screen will look very similar to View Comics. So I can save myself some effort by copying and pasting my View Comics page and naming it to Save Comics. So this whole View Comics screen, I can copy that, paste it. We need to then just change a little bit. PG uh, Save Comic. The navigation comes in. I'll look up again how to deactivate the button. It's a, it's a simple class, but I forget what it is at the moment. And then um, we've got a we've got a screen to uh, to save comics. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna paste it. PG save comic. Leaving H one the same. Changing H two. Save comic. And what else we're going to do in say in uh, in in save comic is where we need to set up a form to accept a variety of fields. Just to do a quick test, um, view comic back to home. From home, I can uh, go to the save comic. Save comic. Here's where it will ask a variety of fields. Uh, for the moment, we're going to create the fields, then we'll uh, make the code work, of course. Um, when we get it into the uh, into the device, uh, we'll be able to do some cool extra things, such as taking a photo of the comic or taking a photo of the product and to save it as part of our bundle of data. We we'll also have planned. Uh, we're going to be able to scan a barcode, scan a barcode, read what the data in the barcode is, save that in the in the database. That'll be in part two when we get into uh, next month into the class using Visual Studio, which is what allows us to uh, upgrade our project to work on as a real as a real app on Android or iPhone, etc. But we will be able to uh, at least save the basic uh, fields of what a comic is. So let's start to set that up in our save comic. In our save comic, in our article, after heading two, we're going to create a form. We've worked with forms before. We need to have an ID here. Form save comic. We have a field set, two field sets. A field set, if you recall, is a way to conceptually and visually separate data that you're going to collect. So we have a legend which is attached to a field set which will display on screen. There's going to be required information that we will ask about what we're trying to save, and then there's going to be optional information we can save.
in required, we're going to ask for the title of the comic, the number of the comic, and the year. Optional, we'll ask for the publisher, notes, Eventually we're going to do barcode and photo, not just yet. These are the three fields we're going to ask for. This is obviously incomplete. We need to create labels, input fields, the appropriate type, appropriate IDs, submit button, cancel button, all of that. When that is done, then we'll set up the JavaScript. But this is our label. labels, copy and paste here to save some effort, these all have inputs, type of something, required attribute, some placeholder, ID. So name something, ID something. That's just that's the basic um, skeleton of that. We'll need three input fields: asking for title, number, and year, setting specific types. Most of these will be of type text, but number and year would be number. Ask for data that is a number. These three are going to be required. These two and others will not have required. Some of them won't need a placeholder. Some of them will need a placeholder, but they all need an, they all need an, a name and an ID. Notes is actually a little different. That one's not going to be a simple text box. That one is going to be a text area. We'll get to that one later. So each of these um, labels is used for something. forgot that one. There's a lot of redundancy here, so if I'm doing it a little fast, it should make sense what I'm doing. We've done this before. This is, compared to the JavaScript, super simple. It's a basic structure, right? Label, text, for attribute, input, that for is going to be used on this name and this ID. Uh, this notes one is different, it's, it's don't, so don't put an input there yet. And all of these are just naming it something. And in my uh, idea here, kind of obvious, we'll do in title, in number, input for number, input for title, input for year, input for publisher, input for notes. all of these in the title is going to go on name and ID and etc. So 
There's our copy and paste again. Or autocomplete. So in the ID and in the name, each of those. And then notes is the special case. Alright, so this first one of the title of the comic, we're accepting data of type text. The number, the issue number of the comic is number type. The year is a number. And the publisher is also text. Now text will also allow a person to type numbers or dashes, <coughs> exclamation points, whatever. The numbers are really only numbers, and depending on the browser or the device, it will only accept or let you type in numbers, which is very useful. Placeholder. Um, this is the part, uh, you know, any sort of placeholder to explain to the user um, what what they can write here would be very useful. So, just like say Mickey Mouse issue number twelve. From I'm making this up, 1948. So it'll automatically fill in that these are some values that we expect. This will be more useful in other places, maybe notes and such. So publisher here, placeholder. And then again, notes is a special case I haven't gotten to yet. The notes is a, sp is a special case because we can use an input of type text, and it'll be one, one field of them to write notes. But I want uh, people to be able to write a couple of lines of notes, as much as they want, a paragraph, whatever, and visually to give them the space <coughs> to do that. So we have a different kind of tag here called a text area. <coughs> text area. This one's a special case because it does have a pair. These other, these other um, input fields don't have a pair. The text area does. It all it does have uh, attributes though, uh, similar to the other one. But I wanted to do it last because it's a little different. So it also has a placeholder. Uh, oh, one thing here. This one, since I did the copy and paste, I don't want required. The whole point of putting these items in optional is that they are optional. I don't want to force people to write notes or to write the publisher's name. So I removed required attribute in publisher. We could add a uh, placeholder. We don't need a type. We don't need type because uh, text area is a text area. It, it, the type is sort of built in. So we could add a placeholder. Uh, first appearance of Pluto. 
no required attribute. It's not required. But then we need the name and the ID. And all of this is within the first tag. outside of that field set. The, that data there is the optional data and we'll add two more later. Outside of that field set, the required, outside of all of that, still within the form, here's where we have our, our cancel or submit buttons. So we have our input type reset value Set cancel whatever we want in our input of type submit whatever value we want to display to the user like save I can take a quick look at it in the browser. It's not going to work yet. Save comic. So we've got our save comic, we've got our require. We can edit all of this in CSS when we get to that part. Uh, so we've got an area for required. Here's our title, something's already filled in, number, year, uh, optional information. We can play with alignment and sizes and all of that, of course, in CSS publisher notes. So this field here is a little bigger uh, than the other fields, and then there are our reset and our save. Uh, right now the save and reset buttons are, are big down there at the bottom. If we wanted them to only take up a little bit of space, we can style that. We have a jQuery mobile grid where we can divide up the screen uh, you know, halfway here, halfway there, and we can put the buttons uh, in the grid. We can leave it as is so that they spread out across the whole width of the device. But here we've got uh, our save comic screen. It's going to ask for a variety of fields to fill in. If I try to uh, save at this point, I should get the pop-up about the three required fields that are required. If I fill in anything on any of those, I'll get that weird uh, refresh, which we're going to need to uh, prevent default later. If I try to save that, uh, please enter a number. Oh, okay, so that one's numbers. Firefox lets you type anything. Chrome is more strict. Save that. Then I get that parsing error, which is normal because we haven't done prevent default and it resets me all the way back to my home screen. That's normal for the moment. But that screen there is uh, our save comic screen. I want to add a, an icon here. There's a cancel icon and a save icon. Uh, I know one is called delete, and I forget what the other one's called. I think check. Let's see. So input type reset, value reset. We can add uh, icons to this, even though it's not like the other uh, sorts of buttons that we've worked with. Data icon. Uh, I think it's delete data icon, check, 
check. I believe those are it. We can look them up easily. But we can put a couple of icons in those in those fields. There's your cancel, there's your save. So if I want to keep these buttons, the default is their block level elements because of jQuery mobile, meaning that this reset button, even though I wrote them on the same line, this button took up the whole block, the whole row, and pushed down the next button. So they're not sharing the same spot. Um, we can create a... Um, a division on the screen of multiple columns, multiple invisible columns with jQuery mobile. We have a grid system. So the syntax for it requires us to create, to create like a parent div and then we can create the columns. So if you go look at the example, grids, buttons and grids. You can have something like that. Three columns, only the icons, etc. So the basic idea of that is we're going to have code that looks something like this. We have a div with a class. Um, we have A, B, C, D, um, how many columns and such and then we have uh, the actual blocks, A, B, C. So this is going to be one row with three columns, column A, B, C. De depending on different ways that we want to create these columns, we do have grid A, B, C, D, etc. So this is all going to be one, one row of, of uh, icons. So you see there's the first one, the second one, etc. These on a separate one. So we need first a, a div as the big parent. So these buttons that we that I was creating here, div that needs the attribute class UI grid B. And then each individual column is going to be a separate div. Eventually, I'm going to move these into the right spot. You know, this is going to go in the first column, and the second button in the second column. These will be part of the same row. Right now, they are locked level, so they're pushing each other down. Here, we're forcing them to be in the same row. So then each one is a block, UI class A, B, C, etc. That's the first column. Column A, column B, column C, etc. B. <coughs> and then whatever is inside of the actual div is what's going to be inside of the is what's going to be inside of the uh, column. So I'm going to put the reset button in, in the first div and the submit button in the second div. 
And here's the example where we can drag and drop the code. Oh, because there were three examples, there were three buttons in the example. So uh, actually that's grid A. A is two columns, so we have block A and block B. Uh, grid B is three columns, so then we have block A, block B, block C. So then that should create uh, one row of two columns with the uh, invisible rows and columns with the save button uh, or the cancel button on the first column and the save button on the second one. Right there, so reset and save. If we want to further resize those things, we can later via CSS. Again, maybe you know, resize that, style it differently via CSS. Later, we've got these fields, home screen. I'm going to save a comic, fill in all the fields, click Save, save to the database, and we're going to view comics, a list of comics, retrieve them, filter them, etc. in this screen. Those are the big basic screens of, of the actual app to do something. Um, again, as an inventory system, this can be anything. The inventory here happens to be comics, but this can be any sort of item. We can have a variety of input fields to fill in. We can uh, get advanced later on, and also, for example, when we get it to the device, uh, capture GPS coordinates, store that in the database. Uh, the camera, we will use the camera to take a photo of the product, store that in the database. We're going to scan barcodes, etc. We can't do that yet because it's not quite an app, it's still a website. We've got the basic screens, still a lot to fill in, a lot of functionality. But we'll end uh, in a moment, and the project so far, um, we spent most of the day today all in the JavaScript to get the login and log out to work. Although that works, and the actual part of the app doing anything is still uh, coming up with many, many more lines of code. And all of this functionality is on track. It's going to be many lines of code to capture this info. Uh, bundle it properly, store it, retrieve it, filter it, display it. Still a lot for that to go. So our HTML file is up at about 186 lines, and our JavaScript is 147. General questions on what we talked about today? So. I'll put the code in the folder in just a moment. We'll do a little lab time. And we'll go on on uh, Tuesday.